Respected elders, young brothers and friends, and my honorable brothers and sisters. At this very moment, we are sitting in the masjid in the circle of Hadith from the book Sahih al Bukhari, the under going chapter is chapter of Iman. The hadith which I have just read before you, in this very hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions the standing in the night prayer of month of Ramadan with Iman and with the hope of receiving the reward from Allah, meaning standing in the Salatul Tarawi in the month of Ramadan. Whosoever will stand in the Salatul Tarawi with Iman and with the hope of receiving the reward from Allah, his all previous sins will be forgiven. In today's this I will explain the major sins or the minor sins. Now the question here rises in the minds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, whosoever will stand in the Salatul Tarawi his previous sins will be forgiven. And previously in the dars I mentioned the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qama laylat al-qadr imanam wa ihtisaba ghufir lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi who stands in the night of dignity, laylat al-qadr and he worships Allah with the hope that he will receive iman, uh, reward from Allah and he has an Iman, he believes in Allah and Akhirat, his all previous sins will be forgiven. Now the question is, which sins are going to be forgiven? Because in the Quran also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Inna al-hasanati yudhibna sayyiat. A righteous deeds, the right of the evil deeds from the book of deeds. And in the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he says when a person makes a wudu, when he washes the face, washing of the face will wipe off the sin of eyes, the nose. And when you're doing a masa of your ears, it will wipe off the sins of ears. And when we rinse our mouth, gargling, our, gargling in the wudu, this will wipe off the sins of our tongue. And when we wash our feet, wash of the feet will wipe off the sins of feet. When the person walks towards the 
place where he will be committing sin. And our Prophet says, when a person walks from home to the masjid, upon every step he takes, his sins are forgiven. Now, you might be thinking, well, I came in on the car. I drove the car to the masjid. And here Prophet وسلم, is saying that every step, remember, you are burning the petrol. <coughs> you spent money on petrol. And your, the engine of your car is being used. The tires are being used. Anything that you utilize in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now the question is here, which sins are forgiven? So Surah Allah Wasallam mentions that if you do wudu, your sins are forgiven. Sins of eyes, mouth, nose, ears, feet, hands, they are for, all forgiven. And here Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, you stand in the Salat al your sins are forgiven. You stand in Laylatul Qadr, your sins are forgiven. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also says, in the Hasanat, you see, when I say, you know, the righteous deeds, they wipe off your, your sins. Now the question is, which sins? Major sins? Or minor sins? Or both? This is the question. Which sins are forgiven? When you look at the Quran, the Quran tells us the only, through our righteous deeds, only minor sins are forgiven, not the major sins. <coughs> the major sins are only forgiven by Toba. And which are minor sins? Sorry, which are major sins and which are minor sins? This is what we need to know. Major sin is that very sin regarding which our Prophet wasallam mentioned that there is a punishment here in this dunya, such as drinking alcohol or stealing someone's properties or belongings or our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O oh Allah, cursed such person when he commits, something, when he does something and there is a curse upon it, then that sin will be classed as a major sin. Now, first of all, you need to know what sin is. What is a masiyat? What is sin? The definition of a sin is disobedience of Allah. Doing something against the will and the command of Allah is sin. Now, so what does it mean major and minor sin? If masjid means disobedience to Allah, doing something against the will of Allah and the command of Allah, so what does it mean this is major and this is, this is minor, this is big and this is small? Remember, when the sins are compared to one another, then they say this is major and this is minor. Let me give you an example. Committing an adultery is a sin. Gazing at a woman is also, at a, is, is also a sin and is, is classed as fornication. But if you compare these to one another, you will say committing adultery is a major, it's a big sin. And gazing at a woman, it is a sin, but a smaller sin. But they are both disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the sight of Allah, no sin is minor sin. In the sight of Allah, no sin is a minor sin. Every sin is, you know, if you look at the meaning of the masyid and sin, which means disobedience of Allah, whether it is big or small. I just said, when we compare the sins to one another, then we say this is major, this is minor. But in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every sin is a major sin. Hadrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and who used to say Kullu ma nuhiya anhu fa huwa fahiya kabiratun Anything from which we have been prohibited by Allah and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is classed as a major sin is classed as a major sin and these sins which are committed you know what they do to our heart 
Our Prophet said, when a person, when a true believer, when he commits a sin, then a block, a black dot, it appears on his heart. A black dot appears on his heart. It stands on his heart. And if he straight away repents to Allah, makes Toba, does istighfar, then this black dot, it disappears. It goes away. But if he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he, if he does not repent to Allah, he is so heedless, he just carries on with his daily routine, you know, routinely, he just, you know, he just carries on, he doesn't repent, he doesn't even pay attention that, you know, he committed a sin. Then what happens, gradually, this dot, it, it keeps increasing, increasing until it covers the whole heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kalla balrana la kulubihim makanu yaksibun. Allah says their evil deeds rusted their hearts and the, and the evil deeds blackened their hearts. Now, major sins, ulama ikram have written so many books upon major sins. Alama Imam Ibn Hajar al makki but there are, there, are, there are two Imams known as Ibn Hajar. One Ibn Hajar is al Asqalani. The one who wrote the commentary on Bukhari Sharif, which is Fatul Bari. And there is another Imam which is called Imam Ibn Hajar Makki. And let me tell you here Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, he wrote a commentary on Bukhari. He was from Egypt. And Allama Aini, he also wrote a commentary on. Bukhari Sharif. He was also from Egypt. But <clears throat> Imam Aini, he was a Hanafi Imam, and Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani was a Shafi Imam. But remember one thing. Remember one thing. We follow Imam Abu Hanifa, alayhi, but the respect in our heart is for Imam Shafi, Imam Malik. Imam Ahmad bin Hamad as we have for Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi from these members from these members when the name of Imam Malik is mentioned it will be mentioned with respect when the Imam of Shah, Imam Shafi rahmatullahi will be mentioned it will be mentioned with respect when the name of Imam Ahmad bin Hamad will be mentioned it will be mentioned with respect and we should always make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for Allah on the day of Qiyamah raise us amongst these righteous people. And these are the people who will, the Hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment, the, the shuhada, the martyrs will do the shafaat. The ulama ikram will do the shafaat. You know, these ulama, these imams, these great imams, you know, whose effort was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that today in the whole of this in this planet, you know, they are being mentioned and their teachings is being, you know, is being taught to the to the public. So you know, just to imagine how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted these Imams. So I was saying Imam Ibn Hajar al makki not al Sklani, al he was from Makkah Makki, he wrote a book on the major sins. And he counted 467 sins. He counted 467 sins. And our Prophet ﷺ, he has mentioned many sins and he counted that this is major sin, this is major sin, this is major sin. In one hadith, Prophet ﷺ, he said, swearing at parents. You know, abusing abusive language towards parents is classed as a major sin. When this when the Sahaba Ikram heard this, they were surprised. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, can one swear his parents? Or can one use abusive language towards his parents? If they were surprised. But my respected elders, Sahaba Ikram, they were surprised to hear. How can a person swear to his parents? But in this day and age, 
in this day and age, our youth, boys, girls, they swear at their parents and the mothers and the fathers, they complain to the ulama ikram that our, our children are swearing at us. And remember, in, the, in, in a woman there is bohaya, modesty. And in the woman, there is more, less disobedience to the parents than the boys. In the girls, there is less disobedience comparing to the boys. But our Prophet ﷺ in a hadith, he predicted a time will come, a time will come when a girl, when a daughter will treat her mother like her master. You know, when, when, you're, when, when people are uh, working under someone, their employer, you know, employer, they have employees. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a time will come when a daughter will, will, you know, will treat her mother, you know, you know like, like an employee, like a, like a slave. And this is happening. You know, the, how you know, rude the girls are towards their, their mothers. Because father, father is father, is a man in it. He is a man. Something you know, he can show his anger. He can use, you know, you know, you know he, the, the children are a bit scared of the father. And mothers are very lenient towards the children. So the children take advantage of this. And the children nowadays, they swear at their parents. And here, when Rasulullah said swearing at parents is classed as a major sin, Sahaba Ikram, when they heard this, they were surprised. So then Rasulullah he said, he explained how in those days was swearing towards parents. He said, when a person swears to another person's parents, and in the result of this, in return, he swears at his parents back. So Rasulullah said this will be classed as if he swore at his parents. As if he swore at his parents because he became cause of this. Had he not swore at his parents, then he wouldn't swore at his parents. Because he first swore at his parents, then in return he swore at his parents. So Rasulullah said, just to imagine, a person did not swear directly to his parents. He swore at another person's parents. And that very person said, well, you swore at my parents, then he swore back at his parents. So Rasulullah said, if another person swore at your parents because of you swearing at his parents, then it's as if the youth were at your parents. And this will be classed as a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith Prophet said, another sin which is a major sin that is. When a person makes a will, a father makes a will. And in the will, he, he, he writes that so and so my son or my inheritor should, should get less share. He should get less share. Or he totally deprives one of the inheritors. He writes a will. He makes a will. And in the will, he writes, well, so and so, these are my inheritors, my daughter, my uh, my uh, my sons and my daughter or my son he you know he is not included in my inheritance you know in this day in parents sometimes when a when a child becomes a disobedient to parents when a child becomes disobedient to parents he doesn't respect the parents he doesn't look after the parents and what people the parents do they just totally deprive him from the, in the share from his share well when i die you know make a bible you know he he won't have anything there's another another hadith prophet sallallahu whosoever will deprive an a, 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 in, inheritor from his share then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deprive him from the share of jannat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deprive him from the share of Jannah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever makes a will 
and in the will he either reduces the amount of his inheritance, the share, or he totally deprives and he says, no, 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 he, my so-and-so inheritor, there's nothing for him in my, in my virasat. Rasulullah said, this is a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a major sin. So remember, if a son or daughter is disobedient to the parents, well, they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are criminal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why are you, why are you annoying your cover and yourself? Because you are also, the son and daughter, were all, they were already criminal in the sight of Allah. And the father has also become a criminal in the sight of Allah by depriving his, in, his son or daughter from the, from the inheritance. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, making a will and in the will depriving one of the, um, the inheritors, this is a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, the losers, they are ruined. He said three times, Abu Dhar al-Ghafari radiallahu ta'ala who was present, he said, oh Prophet of who are these losers? He said, the one who overlaps his uncles. You know, when we're wearing a trouser or whatever we're wearing, if we overlap, cover our, our uncles, if, our, if the uncles are covered, this is the sign of arrogance, pride. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a major sin. This is a major sin. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a major sin. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the second person who spends in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who helps someone, and then he starts, you know, mentioning his favor. Oh, look, I did, I did this to you, and I helped to you. So this is something you know, publicizing your favor, this is a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, shall I inform you of the major sins, the, the top sins from among the major sins? The Sahaba Kiram said, yes, O Prophet of Allah, tell us. He said, ascribing partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a major sin. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, disobeying parents is a major sin inside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and lying, lying, or, or, or taking false oath is a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by someone, oh, Prophet of Allah, tell us the, the greatest sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, ascribing partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, the person said, the Prophet of Allah, what comes after that? Which sin is greatest in the sight of Allah after that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, adultery, committing adultery with the wife of your neighbor. Because it was the responsibility of the neighbor to look after the wife of the neighbor who is absent, who is gone somewhere. It was his responsibility as it was his responsibility to look after his own family. Similarly, it was his responsibility to look after the wife of the person who is gone somewhere and take care of her to committing adultery with her is a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the sins, if you stand in Laylatul Qadr or in month of Ramadan, in Salatul Tarawih, all your previous sins are forgiven, which sins are forgiven? Now listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in tajtanibu kaba'ira ma tum haun anhu, nukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum wa nudkhilkum mudkhalan kareema. Allah is saying, if you abstain from the major sins, of what you have been forbidden. You know, the major sins, if you abstain from them, 
وَكَفِّرْ أَنْكُمْ سَيِّعَاتِكُمْ We will write of your sins. Meaning, we will write of your, your minor sins. And we will then let you enter into noble entrance. Meaning, in paradise. So, in this verse of the Quran, Surah Nisa, verse number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly declares, if you abstain from major sins, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your minor sins through your right deeds. Which means, Muhammad bin Kaab al-Qurazi used to say, he used to say, he used to say, the greatest act of worship in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to abstain from the sins. On one occasion, a Prophet was sitting. On one occasion, Rasulullah was sitting. He said, now I'm going to tell you something. Is there anyone who can receive this message from me and take this message from me? And then after taking it from me, he should go and propagate and he should go and tell others. We learn from this hadith, what we learn in the masjid from the ulama ikram, we should go and tell our family members. We should, we should also go and tell them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadith Abu Harir radiallahu anhu stood up. He said, O Prophet of Allah, I'm ready to take this message from you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said few things. I will, I will mention one. He said, Ittakil maharim takun a'badan nas. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Abstain from the forbidden things, from the sins, then you will be classed and declared in the sight of Allah as the greatest worshipper. As the greatest worshipper. So Muhammad bin al uh, al Muhammad bin Kaab al Qurdi used to say, so the greatest act of worship in the sight of Allah is to stay away from the sins. And then he used to say, he said, whosoever offers the prayers, does all the righteous deeds, and along with this, he is committing the major sins. He is no ibadat, no worship is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying clearly, if you stay away from the major sins, then through your good deeds, we will wipe off your minor sins. Which means if one does not abstain and does, does stay away from the major sins, and he, 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 he does all the good deeds, then according to this verse, the ulama ikram, and the commentator of the tafsir, they say his good deeds, if he is not staying away from the major sins, his good deeds will not wipe off his minor sins. So there is a need that we stay away from every sin. Don't class and don't look at the sin that this is a major sin, this is major and this is minor. As I said in the beginning, every sin is a disobedience to Allah and in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every disobedience is is, is is the major. We only say major and minor when we compare the sin one to another. You know, when we say this, you know, this sin, you know, uh, comparing to this one, it seems a uh, you know, uh, greater and it's a major. But in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is every sin is greater and every sin is major. The ulama, they give, a, they give an example. They say big scorpion and small scorpion, they are both dangerous. No one will say this snake is small, so I can put my hand in front of its mouth. No one, no one will say, snake is snake, whether it's big or small. Similarly, sin is sin, whether it's big or small. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, for myself, and all of you, that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep us away from every sin, and protect us against every sin. Allah kuma salli ala Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fi al-akhirati hasanatum wa kina azab al-nar. Rabbana tukabbal minna inna kanta sami'u al-alim. Wa tubu alayna inna kanta tubuwaab al-rahim. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamad rahim.